Um, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Can I? I prefer not speaking with the microphone. I think it's a very small room, so it's okay. Okay, my name is Michael Lee. I'm actually the CTO of a company, a startup called JobTech. Okay, um, I know this talk of mine is actually not very technical, but I'm actually going to cover a little bit about the, this thing about technical interviews. Everybody in here has ever taken an interview before? Who has not taken an interview yet? None. Okay. How about how many people have taken less than five interviews? Okay, good. I see three or four. This will help you a lot. For those that have taken more than five interviews, your next step will be actually for another type of technical interview together when you're talking to a project manager. So when you're working with other external parties, there's also another technical interview there. So it will be useful for a lot of people. So there's also a few concepts out of here that I have to bring about. And that is whatever Max has said just now about publicity, very, very important. The first thing I do when I look for people, I'll see whether they have a website first. So please take note of that. Yeah, it is very, very important. If I cannot find his website, the next thing I look for is, anybody know? LinkedIn, okay, yes, one. GitHub, GitHub yes. I'm a developer. I'll look for developer websites. So it's GitHub, definitely. So do take note of that. It is very, very important. Get your, your, your name known out there. For me, I don't want to get my name known anymore. Uh, too much things coming my way, not so good. <laughs> so it's the other way around. Okay, but since this is about technical interview, let me just go straight into it. If you want to know more about me and all that, again, go and Google for me, uh, LinkedIn and all that. I'm sure you can find out. I think there's a very nice write-up for me inside the, the, the this, what do you call it? The, the blurb thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who wrote it. You wrote it. Uh. I didn't write it myself. <laughs> okay, but... Yeah, my LinkedIn, okay. Oh, okay. See, very useful. Huh? But okay, just for those people that have under five interviews and all that, some general tips that I actually want to share. For those people, especially in here from startup and businesses and all that, so there are, there are a couple of things that we, when we interview people, right? We will really notice and we may not share you as a candidate. Anybody ever felt as if I got rejected? I do not know why. Anyone? I only see one person nodding their head, so everybody didn't ever felt rejected at all. Awesome. Uh, please share with me your tips. <laughs> okay. Uh, but basically, there are a lot of things that we, we do when we actually do the process. You must take note first that most of the hiring process goes through, uh, the, the person that's hiring goes through at least a few hundred candidates all the time. So first thing we do is we filter. When we filter people, first thing we do is we filter by their resume that you send in. When you, feel, when you send your resume, I will pretty much have thrown away at least 90% of them. Because of, ah, not nice. Uh, uh, put my, my name of my company correctly. So, first thing to note is, whenever you are sending to each of the different parties, please don't spam anyhow. I have noticed many, many a time that people write to me, uh, use my name, wrong, wrong name, uh, use wrong company name, uh, apply for different job title, uh, these things happen all the time. I think there are a lot of spammers out there. Don't be one of them. Be more genuine when you're coming to an interview because you've already been filtered through that step. So be a bit more closer to them. Build a rapport up with your interviewer. So just a bit of general interview tips. This is important to do some background research. Like before you come for this, uh, for this talk itself, I'm sure you looked at all our speaker profile, yes? That is, wow, no. <laughs> okay, background research is very, very important. If you come out and meet up with me and go, hey, you're Michael, isn't it? Okay, yeah, I'll feel much happier. Same thing with a company. If you go to a company and the person say, do you know what my company does? And you just go, oh, I don't know. Do you think you win the interview? <laughs> I think you've already failed one point and that is you didn't do any background research on my company. And I'll feel very, huh, this guy thinks he's very, very good, is it? I will not hire him. Remember, hiring managers are people like you and me. We feel slighted as well if you, if you condescend against us. So please, it's reciprocated. So learn from that. Try to be, treat them as friends as well, you know, or meeting from the first time. Be very nice human about it, you know, like, oh yeah, I'm a bit nervous, that kind of thing. That's fine. It breaks the ice when you say, I'm a bit nervous, be a bit gentle with me, that kind of stuff. Joke, joke a bit. Very, very useful. All right? Next. Business is actually very, very important in every startup and every company you go to. So I, my second point is actually who are their customers is actually very, very important because you also want to know as a 
person or employee or even joining for the project itself, whether or not the money coming in. No money come in, I'm going to pay you. Please do take note that the business is a very important aspect of every company that you go to. Don't mind, just ask. Remember, this is an interview. It's not just one way. It's a two-way communication. If they interview you, you better interview them as well. All right? Next, who is interviewing you is very important. As I say, background research. If you have found out that, oh, this person that you're talking to is a CTO. He's a technical guy. Expect technical questions. All right? Please do not go in there ex not expecting technical questions and get really stunned when I just ask you, do you know how to build a sorting algorithm? Uh, very bad. <laughs> I will have failed you immediately. Check your documents. What I mentioned just now about putting the right job title, name, everything. Again, very important. You may you make very common sense. However, a lot of people still make the mistake. Uh, I've seen a lot of emails. They just put the wrong name still. If you do notice that you put the wrong name, at least just reply back and say, whoops, sorry. As a hiring manager, I can accept that. However, if you ignore it all the way and keep calling me by the wrong name, especially when I reply to you and say, best regards, Michael, then something is really wrong there. All right? Of course, review yourself is also very important because you are applying for the job or you are applying for a project. You already know the background of the project or the job. Think about it yourself. Before you go for the interview, what kind of questions will they ask you? Prepare for it. This is very, very important. If you are going to, to go for a full stack developer, what kind of questions do you ask you? Anything related to full stack, from the bottom of the stack to the top of the stack. Be prepared for it. At least think through what kind of questions will they ask. These are very general tips still. Eh? <laughs> Next, what would you like to highlight and why? This is also, again, a date away, a bit common sense because these people have not met you before. But before the interview, they will do their background research on you as well. Again, you'll search for your blog. They'll see what you've written and they'll ask you questions about that. They will check your resume. Your resume says what? Oh, your hobby is Frisbee. They'll ask you about Frisbee. If you don't write that down inside your resume, they won't ask you about it. So please note, even when you are writing your resume and all that, and what you're saying, that's what people are going to ask you about. If you say, oh, I won the hackathon, oh, they're going to ask you about the hackathon. You already have preempted the whole entire process by sending your resume. You already know what they're going to ask you. Prepare yourself for those questions, because they will definitely dig deeper into that. These are technical folks, and you should know if all technical questions, we ask very deep questions like, how do I hit to the performance audit log and do I need to do any modules to install? Yes, we are very detailed people. Please do note of that. Next. Uh, yes, interview the interviewer. That's very important. I, I, this is a point which I want to stress very, very, very strongly because I do not like candidates that just get questioned. After the whole entire process, I'll be like, okay, this guy is really boring. You just answered my questions and that's it. Why do you want to ask questions to your interviewer? Anyone? Find out more about the company. Yeah. Find out more about the background. I mean, Any of the points which I, do, I don't have around here. Yes. Correct. You are trying to put yourself in their shoes and when you put yourselves in their shoes or so, you are also trying to build something called rapport. When you have rapport with a person, Remember, we are human beings. We're not always logical. I will hire people based on, oh, I like the guy. Was he technical? Mm -hmm, not really, but he looks pretty cool and he seems very motivated to work. They look at your attitude. So it does happen. Build some rapport. And why you want to cover the grounds of not just only on the technical side is because why? You want to cover both technical and attitude. And if you score well on both attitude and aptitude, you are very highly likely to be hired. You might be competing against another person out there that is just, wow, this guy is very technical, but yeah, he doesn't know how to communicate. Uh. You know, he doesn't tell me anything, he's just on there, uh, just look at code. More fun, huh? Whereas, you, well, whereas at the end of it, you know, you go, okay, after this, let's go for beer. I think I'll hire the guy that wants to go for beer with me. <laughs> All right? Culture, team structures, these are actually more of the things that you can talk to them about. These are more of topics they can talk to them about. You can always think about more things than this. 
I had people that actually talk to me about uh, things such as, uh, oh, you know, what food is there near my workplace? Any good food around this area? I uh, come here quite often. Oh, that's pretty awesome. And this guy's like, hmm, you know, ask him next. You know, you stay near here. Is that what you're asking me that? You stay near here. The next thing I'll be thinking uh, as employers, like, oh, this guy can work late. But. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, that was just a test to see whether everyone's paying attention, okay? <laughs> not true, not true. But it's really, it's really true, sometimes, once in a while, when you're, depending on what kind of work you're doing, you do need some people that will be actually close to the office in order for emergencies. So even knowing that you're nearby and all that is actually very good too. Alright? Just, just general interview tips. Technical interview. What the hell is a technical interview? It's actually more of uh, questions that are very more probing. They'll ask you like, you know, what is the project you've done? If you worked with a, a development block itself, what kind of stack did you use? Do you actually work to, uh, directly with the database? Do you, or do you do some modifications on your stack? Do you do any like modification and you know, do you tweak so that uh, the CSS script actually does something different? You have to go down and change the whole entire thing. They will ask very probing questions. Why do they ask these things? They actually want to know whether or not you have really done it. Why? We have so many posers out there that say, oh, I know everything. And these people are very good at marketing, extremely good. They wayang, 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 wayang so much that I don't know whether they know anymore. If you're a hiring manager, especially if they're technical, they will ask these probing questions just to prove whether they know their stuff. How many people in here do web development? Awesome. If I ask you right now, don't you answer, I don't want anybody to embarrass themselves, what's the difference between ID and class? in HTML. You all can answer, right? That's great. <laughs> Think about it. But during a technical interview, I will actually ask deeper, when and why do you use it? All right? Very, very important. Be prepared for these kind of questions, especially if you write down inside your resume, my skill is web development, HTML, CSS. I'll probe how much you know about it. Because when you put into the development environment, especially when I'm putting things into production. They will ask you, you know, okay, uh, how much experience do you have doing this? Have you done it many times before? Do you do it constantly? Do you do it every day? All of this actually comes into play. Of course, some of you might be like, no, yeah, I, I actually, I just studied it. I just learned it from school. Totally fine still. Why? Because I will also ask, what projects did you do in school? And when I ask you what projects you did in school, the next thing I'll ask is, what was your role? When I ask you a role and you just say, oh, I did everything. I'll probe deeper to double check whether or not you really did everything. That's where I'll ask. Not in this page, huh? Next page. <laughs> Let me go to next. I'll ask things such as, you know, what will you do better next time? Have you all thought about that? From all your projects, what will you have done better? I'm sure you all have actually made a lot of mistakes in all your projects, right? School projects, real projects. Anybody done a project, no mistakes. First time code, C sweet, sweet. I see someone nodding at why. <laughs> so first time coding, we all know, I don't know. First time you finish a code. If it works very well the first time round, something must be really, really wrong. Right. And because of that, we know human beings are the ones creating it, we will make mistakes. We learn from the mistakes. Or we hope people learn from the mistakes. As an employer, I would be looking for people that have learned from their mistakes. Not people that, oh, the project went awesome. We delivered on time. No problems at all. Too good to be true, huh? You know what the saying goes, if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. Huh? If you tell me, oh, there were quite a number of problems, but we still managed to do it through. I'm, I think I'm more liable to believe that person. They tell me, oh, what kind of problems and how do you solve it? These are the probing questions that we will ask during interview, especially for technical ones. So necessarily, all the time you're going to get a technical guy, you might get something that's a hiring manager, a HR manager. The HR manager may ask some of the technical questions as well, where they're asking on behalf of the person actually hiring them. So do take note of that. Check whether or not they are that kind of person. If they're not technical, don't go and spew all sorts of terminology to them. Give it to them in more general sense so that they can understand and get back to their guys and say, this guy really knows what they're doing. They can explain it to me. Okay? 
very important to know who is interviewing you. Of course, next thing you'll ask also is like, oh, okay, you know, more deep down into like, what tools do you use? IDE, do you use Notepad++, do you use Sublime, do you use Vim? Or do you use PyCharm? You know, what IDE is a really, really great question, especially amongst developers. I don't know about you guys, but I have lots of quarrels with very good close friends of mine, like which IDE to use. If I'm a Java guy, I'll be like, Eclipse or NetBeans? Ah, NetBeans is better, but Eclipse, ah, wow, there's a lot of uh, plug plugins that are very good. You can go on forever. It's like talking about your toolbox, you know, like which tool is better. This can go on forever. It is very subjective, but if you're talking to a technical manager and you go into this long discussion about this, you're there. You're really, really there because the rep is built up. They know that you really know your tool very well and you're very likely to get the job. Of course, the next thing is the language also. Everybody here learns a programming language, right? Any preferred programming language? Anyone hates a certain language? I have certain languages I hate. I, um, yes. <coughs> R, R. <laughs> hmm? I, what I, I do, I use uh, Java, I use Python, I use Perl, I use Prolog, I use Haskell. Uh, MATLAB sometimes as well, but I do not like certain languages such as R and C because actually it's very wordy, it's very easy to make mistakes in it. It's, more easy, it's easier to make mistakes in those languages than others. That's why I hate it. But to be able to answer this kind of question you know, on a fly like this, it's actually the key thing that you're looking for in an interview. Yes, we don't mind if somebody, you give them a tough question, uh, problem solving. Uh, I need some time to think. We're okay with that. But if you ask you this kind of question like that, you're like, oh, wait, uh, let me think. Uh. Like, why? You just said you don't like this language and you cannot answer that. Uh. <laughs> so we do take note of that as well. If you hesitate on certain questions, but not to be, don't make you nervous during uh, these kind of interviews and all that. Be as natural as possible. You have, be confident of your language just that you use, yeah already done a lot of development work before, be confident in yourself. You don't have to like wayang too much as well. If you really do not know, just say you really do not know. You can't expect, I can't expect you to know everything. But of course, do not know is always a bad thing to say. Just say, uh, do not know but something else. Follow up with something that they can discuss on something else, maybe that you are more better in. That's why you must go through this whole entire process of preparing yourself first. What kind of things do I want to highlight about myself? Oh, do you use Java? Uh, no, I don't use Java, but maybe I use uh, something closer to Java, uh, like Python, for example. It's a little bit of an OOP kind of language as well. Lead it the way that you want them to, because they've, their starting point is only your resume and your online profile. When you lead them, you also try to lead them towards what they're looking for. If you're looking for application programmers, talk towards application programming, especially projects they've done across that. If it's not necessarily going to align together with their, what they are looking for, still highlight some of the projects you think you're very strong in. Why did you learn, a certain, uh, learn in a certain project that you've done? Because whatever you've learned, even if you tell a story, like what I'm doing right now, I'm telling you a story of all my past experiences, you are actually learning. You actually realize that, huh, this guy really has done a lot of work. That's what we are looking for. Persons that actually have done the work themselves. We are always looking for people that are more productive. You're not looking for people that just talk. Talkers are very common. <laughs> okay, yeah, one more minute, okay. Of course, the next thing is of course, the interviews itself, they'll ask you questions, how to implement certain things, how to design certain things, how to actually solve certain things. Two types of real technical questions come out here. One is actually the ones where I usually put out a paper in front of them and say, write out an algorithm to sort a list of numbers. And you will be extremely surprised that 50% of people cannot even do that. Okay? It is surprising and I will lower the bar even more and say write it in pseudocode. <laughs> still, more than 70%, more than 50% still cannot do it after that. It's very, very scary. So if you are able to even write out in pseudocode, even, you know, use some of the libraries that you know, that is great. If you cannot write, use the, use the, like, you know, Python sorted, that's fine. You can write it out in whatever you learn in school. Totally fine because it still got right. 
Lastly, when people give you a problem to solve, do note that you don't have to solve it immediately. 100% of people so far, after getting the question, put down the paper and go, that is bad. Try to clarify the question. I didn't tell you sort what. I didn't tell you sort descending or ascending. Clarify. Because that actually shows that you are thinking. The mental equity that we are looking for in a programmer is to say, can you clarify, you know, there are many ways to do it actually. Did you mean this or that? If you don't clarify, you don't try to actually ex get more clarification for people. We know that you have not done this before. You have not worked together with people before. We are looking for people that are able to with other people communicate and actually try to work together with people. All right? Lastly, just three points. Remember, prepare for your interviews. Look through whatever, whatever you've written out inside your resume. Find out more about the background of the person. Ask questions during interview because that one I believe most of you will always forget. Always ask things such as, how much are you going to pay me? That's very important, right? Follow up and update. It's actually the last part, which I didn't, I didn't post up as, uh, at all just now, but follow up it actually goes two ways. The, you expect the employer to follow up with you. Tell me whether I want an interview. But sometimes they forget. Why don't you also just remind them once in a while, hey, uh, are you following up with me? Next thing, also very important, we are all human. You may have found a better opportunity out there. You don't like it when the employer leaves you hanging. Do the same for them. I found another job outside, just to inform you. Be nice to them as well. If you're nice to them and then they still like you and all that, what's going to happen even after the interview is that they might still connect with you. They might approach you next time for future opportunities as well. So do take note, build your rapport, build your bridges with people, use it as your network. It's very, very important. These people are going to be, going to be your future bosses. They're also going to be your future employees or future business partners. Please take note of that. It's very, very important to actually make the most of all these technical interviews. You're buying people's time, make use of it. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>